Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a game between Cybernetic Pony and Cortez the Killer. And this game is going to. Sorry about that. Anyway, this is going to be on. Battle for Planet 17, not Battle for Planet 14, as I previously stated. I was mistaken on that, and it's really bright. Sorry about this. I Okay, I guess Bloom it doesn't work very well yet. But anyway, this match should be interesting. We have Cortez the Killer starting in the south with Cloakybot Factory, while Cybernetic Pony in the north has not placed his factory yet. Not sure why. He does have an energy cell on a recon comm, so still not quite... He's close to the base 10 energy that he needs. Getting a jump jet plant right off the bat, this is surprising. Granted on... No, actually, this is surprising. This map has a lot of slopes. This map is fully bot-pathable. I don't know why he's going for jump bots. He might just want to go for pyros, and... No, he's going for puppies first. No pyros, just puppies. Oftentimes, you just go for jump jet factory for pyros, but this map doesn't have any reclaim on it, so the puppies... Puppies can reclaim to get more stuff. They can get more of themselves. They can replicate by reclaim, but there's no reclaim on the field right now, so I'm a little bit surprised that he's going for a puppy this early, other than just the fact that he went for a jump bot factory and he needs a scout. Now going for base construction, but no defensive units, while Cortez the Killer getting very quick glaives. So Cortez the Killer had a bit of an advantage right now, but one pyro would be a nightmare for these glaives to deal with. And this Puppy going around trying to figure out where Cortez spawned. It could have been anywhere along the south side of the map, and the initial location is wrong, but a good guess. Most players will start near the three metal spots, which Cybernetic Pony himself did. And Cybernetic Pony does have a shotgun on his commander, so at least that is defense. He does have enough defenses to get rid of the glaze. He was prepped for that, but he wasn't going for any quick units. Whereas Cortez the Killer only has the one laser turret, but now that he's aware that a, I think he might be aware of the jump out factory, but I don't... No, actually, I don't think the Glaze got close enough. No, I don't believe the Glaze got close enough. I think Cortez the Killer is still in the dark about what Cybernetic Pony is up to. And the puppy just now getting over to Cortez's base will actually get to this... It'll get to the Rector, and it... Would it kill it? It... Actually won't kill it. It will kill this Metal Extractor, however, which is currently in the process of being built. And that will clue Cortez in on what's going on. Right now, Cortez the Killer is now fully aware of what is happening. And getting a, a mid-game stinger early on. Interesting idea. I mean, admittedly, Cybernetic Pony is moving his commander very far forward. This stinger could work, but it's not going to be built up in time. It will not work. And a radar coming up as well. Glaive coming to take that down. Now, Cybernetic Pony at this point does have no radar. Cortez the Killer also has... Actually, he has does have radar, but he doesn't have... Actually, he has really nice radar coverage. There's only this shadow right here that he can't see, but he can see it, the entirety of Cybernetic Pony's base. The entirety of that, everything but this section over here, well, these side of the map, basically. But that stinger goes down, and it was no good. Cortez does have a support comm, but it's only slightly tougher than the recon comm, just because the recon comm is built for speed. Getting out of the way, Cybernetic Pony is now getting up some pyros. There we go, waiting for that, and we finally see the pyros. Cortez continuing to build up, switching over to... Raiders or Riot Skirmisher, not sticking with the Raiders, switching to Anti-Raider. The Pyro, however, is going to be fairly quick. This Warrior will not catch up to it, unless Cybernetic Pony jumps it right into the middle of that Warrior, but even then, it's going to be a bit tough for the Warrior to deal with it. But yeah, against Pyros, Riot units have a tip typically a hard time just due to the speed difference. The fact that Pyros can jump is huge. They just escape out of anything. Raiders have a chance, but then Raiders have a hard time dealing with them for their fire. The main saving grace is that pyros are extremely expensive, so for cost, raiders can do quite well, provided that you handle them properly, draw circles around the pyros and such. Riot units with great positioning will do fine, but it's the positioning that's the problem. They really need to be able to get in and actually hit the pyros, which the pyros really shouldn't be allowed to have happen to them. And one of the pyros actually is going down, the other one coming into the fight, and Taking some damage from the Rockos, able to take out one of them, and able to dodge the others. And this Rocco is going to be going down. There we go, one Rocco going down, but the cost of one Pyro, that's not worth it. 90 metal versus 220. And Azus finishing off that Pyro. So Cybernetic Pony rather throwing away his units right now, and you cannot do that with a Jump Jet Factory. 
This factory is entirely based around micromanagement. All of its units are utility units. They all are meant to just work on their own in small numbers and be extremely well controlled. Now, of course, in large numbers, that means they're a terrifying force to be reckoned with. But you need to actually survive long enough to get large numbers. It's kind of like heavy tanks. Similar idea behind both factories. And unfortunately, at this point, Saturday Point, you're not going for that. However, Cortez is throwing his commander into some defenders, not throwing it away quite yet. But these pyros... Once again, coming up, Cyberman Pony continuing to build more of them. He ha does have an economic advantage over Cortez the Killer. Cortez has about eight metal extractors, while Cyberman Pony has... Actually, no, less than that. Let's see. Cortez the Killer has about... He has six metal extractors, while Cyberman Pony is the one with... Nine, in fact. So Cyberman Pony is... Almost... Is pretty much ahead at this point for economy. The Cortez the Killer has... Enough reclaim to bridge the gap, at least for a little while, but Pyro's coming in, more Pyro's streaming in, Rock is doing what he can against them, and Hammers, terrible idea, why did he go for Hammers? Against Pyro's, as you can see, that does nothing. He needs to get rid of those Pyro's first, the defenses can be taken care of by Warriors. The Warriors can at least deal with the Pyro's if the Pyro's get close, and the Glaives can deal with them otherwise. I mean, Warriors do a great job against defenses, and against Commanders, I mean... Against, admittedly, yeah, level 1 commander, 3 or 4 warriors will take it out no problem, especially recon commander. Might be able to get away with 2, actually, with that case. However, Pyros are coming along the west side and will be able to take out Cortez's base completely. It's undefended. Ignore that laser turret. I mean, okay, the fact that the Pyros are low health is actually somewhat meaningful, but one of them is at full health, and it will survive long enough to get rid of this turret. Or, no, with repair, that turret has been saved, but these power plants will not be... So Cortez the Killer almost at half the economy of Cybernetic Pony, and Cybernetic Pony getting... There we go, he is now getting a gunship plant. That is going to be a big deal. Since that's just going to finish this off, I mean... There isn't a whole lot that's been set up for defenses for Cortez the Killer. He was relying largely on units. So he doesn't have any anti-air to deal with this, and his economy is... Basically reclaim at this point, and the reclaim is very close. It's dangerous and close to Cybernetic Pony. He is putting enough tourists around to stop anything from happening, and the Pyros are taking care of the rest of it. And most of Cortez's economy is going... Actually, mostly he needs energy as well. Far less power than metal. He's floating on metal, he's dead in the water on energy, and all of it's devoted to morphing, which... He's almost done morphing, but still not quite, and now is a terrible time to morph. Now is a better time to be trying to push as much of the economy into building up units to deal with the Pyros and to deal with the defenses. At this point, he could still build... I mean, even the Glaives would actually do fairly well against gunships. But five Banshees coming up. More are on the way, and Cybernetic Pony with 30 metal up. He is... He does have a Freaker assisting the factory, and that is just pushing it up, making everything come up that much faster. So 15 metal going to the fa that factory, 10 metal going to the Jump Jet factory, and the rest being used for general construction. And, of course, the units being used for general dis destruction and doing a great job of it. Cybernetic Pony continue to invest along the eastern side of the map, which, incidentally, as I mentioned before, is the place that Cortez the Killer has no awareness of whatsoever. At this point, Cortez is now finally aware of what's going on, that there's expansion from Cybernetic Pony along the east side. But it doesn't matter. His main concern is going to be this gunship's here, losing his commander in the middle of the map. That his was his main worker and main reclaim. He does have other workers in play. This Rector, basically. And that's about it. Cybernetic Pony has his two Freakers, and there's the Rector down here. And the Rector over here. That's basically it for workers. There... So, Cybernetic Pony has basically got this game in the bag, getting rid of the factory, getting rid of the caretakers, and... Azu's trying to do what it can along with some warriors. Not doing a terrible job. Gunships do fly low enough that most ground units can take them out. And these Banshees are going down. Actually, very nice use of the Zeus and Warrior as anti-air defense. Very clever that. However, these Pyros are still coming in. The more, the important thing is that Cortez the Killer has lost most of his economy. He still has about four Metal Extractors running, but that's about it. And most of them are in vulnerable parts of the map. Well, one of them is going down right now, and the other th two of them are in the center, and the rest is in the back, or the last one's in the back. Does have... Well, the Solar Collectors aren't going to help against Pyros. And that Zeus... Well, it's out of out of position, as is the warrior. Everything's out of position. Cybernetic Pony has the economy entirely in the bag. He has this game in the bag. There is an assault force for Quartz the Killer trying to do a last-ditch attempt to take out everything that's left. And 
It's not going to last very long. All these Rockos on fire are not going to last. And the Glaive's coming to try to get rid of this Pyro. It's just going to jump away. Probably jump up here, actually. To avoid getting killed if Saturday Pony is paying attention to it. But no, he is not. He is going to lose that. Losing that Pyro. He did not have to do that. He could have jumped it up here. Where his other Pyro actually had ended up. But instead, he did not. Losing that doesn't matter, though. It really doesn't matter. Cortez the Killer has lost everything he has. He has still some Attack Force. Some Zeus's. Some Jethro's, actually, to get rid of the Banshees. But that's... A bad idea. Jethro's are a waste of money at this point. He's able to do fine with Glaive's Warriors and Zeus's against those gunships at this point, and he can't do anything against the Jumpbot Factory with the Jethro's. So that is not the way to go. I mean, it seems like the way to go because it's the anti-air unit, and if it was just gunships, I would say it is, but the problem is that there's the Pyros there. Those are just going to rip apart everything else, and with this many Banshees, this a few Jethro's going back here would help, but at this point it's just too late. Cortez has no money in the bank. He has one metal income and three energy, four energy. No, no metal income now. This is all he has. He has this Zeus. That's about all he has for assets. And an attempt to attack towards the north completely failing. Cortez the Killer will be throwing in the towel anytime now. If he's not just defeated outright. No, he throws in the towel. He is resigned. That is the game. So stay tuned everyone, I'll be back in just a moment with a game between two really good players, if in case these have been kind of boring.